Hey everyone, my name is Jessie Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid and today I have a couple of fun, fast, fall projects for you to do at home and we'll be using our free Mod Podge downloadable printables. Um, so in case you didn't know, we have a whole library on plaidonline.com slash modpodge of free printables. So we have tons of designs, we have lots of seasonal designs like we'll be using today. Um, we have ones for sign making, ones for Mod Podging on terracotta pods, birdhouses, so many fun designs for you guys to print, um, cut out, and use in your Mod Podge projects, and they're all free to you. So if you didn't know about those, make sure to check those out. I'll be showing you some of our fall designs today. Um, as always, we have Steven here in the studio, so if you have questions or comments during the live stream, please make sure to put those in the chat. I'd love to answer them. Um, we'd love to hear where you're watching from. So as far as supplies, um, like I already said, we'll be using our free Mod Podge downloadable printables. Um, of course, we'll be using our Mod Podge. So I've got a couple different formulas here today. I like to pick my Mod Podge formula depending on the project I'm doing, of course. So today I'll be showing you a project using our Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge, which we'll get into later. And we'll also be using a new formula called our Super Matte. So just like the title says, this is our mattest formula in Mod Podge, and it's one of my favorites. It's also brand new. And then I have a couple of folk art paints just for base coating um, and uh, putting into our projects as well. As far as the surface we'll be using today, I've got a couple of fun plaid surfaces. So this is our wood round. Um, this is a super trendy um, surface to use for crafting. It comes with the bark. It's one of those wood slices. It's great for using as like trivets, for making tiny signs with. Um, there's so many things you can use this for in your crafting. And I'll also be showing you a craft using um, our wood um, coaster surfaces. So just square little coasters. It comes in a four pack, so there's about a million things you can do with these. But I'll be showing you a print printables project on that one. Awesome. Yeah, and we had somebody uh, come in and ask where we can get the Mod Podge printables. Uh, that's on our website at platonline.com. And you can also find them in the description of the video, whether you're watching oh, on YouTube there or you Facebook. Go. They are uh, linked below, and they'll take you to the, uh, straight to the page where you can download them. Yeah, also, if you just go to Google and type in Mod Podge Printable Library, it'll take you right to the page. And it'll show you, it'll take you right to Plaid Online, right where they are. Um, you can see all of the designs. Cool. Um, so the two projects I'm going to be showing you today, I showed you a little bit already, this coaster set. Um, so really fun and cute, kind of a pastel design. Um, a little bit different for fall, but I think it's really fun for this time of year. Pastels are super trendy. So I'm going to show you how I made those. And then also this really fun and easy little um, fall sign. So I use one of our printables that says Harvest Wishes. So great for Thanksgiving, great to put as a centerpiece or just to have in your home if you're um, hosting and things like that. A really fast one to do as well. Um, so here's the pumpkins we'll be using for our coasters. We're going to be doing them kind of simultaneously depending on dry time and things like that. Um, it comes with these sweet little pumpkins, all super pastel, um, really fun and kind of a different palette for this season. We'll also be using um, this little page of messages. So again, all of these are free to you. So um, it comes with the little pumpkin icons. It comes with all these little phrases. You can make little signs with them. You could probably even use some of these on larger coasters, um, but really pretty designs. And then just some more of the designs we have, guys. We have tons of fall sign making designs. So these fit great on a ton of our plaid surfaces. Bless this home, blessed, um, really pretty, you know, hand lettered looks, which is super trendy. Um, some more hand lettering, gather, um, a heart full of gratitude. We even included little leaves so you can embellish your designs and things like that. Uh, but we've got a ton, a ton of different options for you guys to choose from. And this is just a few. This isn't even all of the fall ones. Grateful, home sweet home. Um, we've got Christmas. We had tons of Halloween too, which you can. We've got you know, like spring ones. We've got florals, tons. evergreen mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. We have, uh, yeah, evergreen stuff. We have stuff for bachelorette parties. We have stuff for the beach. We have stuff for your lake house. I mean, there's so many fun designs. And like I said, they're all free. So if you haven't checked those out, please make sure you do because it's all right there and it's so great to use for your Mod Podge crafting. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to start base coating my surfaces. I'm going to start with my coaster and I'm just going to start by painting it this purple color. And what I use is our Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin in the color Wisteria. It's probably hard to read because it's um, pretty light, but it's called Wisteria. So I'm going to put some on my plate. And I'm just going to grab a flat brush and do a nice even coat of that right on my coaster. So 
So guys, let us know. It is officially November. It is officially time to start counting down for Thanksgiving. So if you guys are in the U.S. and you celebrate Thanksgiving, um, let us know if you're hosting this year, if you're traveling, if you've been doing any Thanksgiving crafts. We'd love to hear about some of your traditions. Um, that's the next one. We, of course, we, we went big for Halloween here at Plaid, and we're probably still recovering from our fun party, um, but we're ready for the next holiday. What's, we're, and we're also, crafting. I want to know what's your favorite Thanksgiving food, too. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food, Stephen? Andy and I just talked about this, okay. but my favorite one is uh, green bean casserole. Yeah, I do love that. Yeah, can't it's beat it. Um, I pretty much like any kind of potato. Okay. Like any. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, you know, really any. How, how do you potatoes. feel about the cranberry sauce? Um, you know what? I am a canned cranberry sauce person. Okay. I, I prefer the can. That's why that's what I was raised on. I don't I don't like any of it. Really? It's just not for me, it's bitter, I don't think. For sure. Yeah. I like it with the turkey though. Okay. It's good. All right, so I did a nice base coat. I would paint the sides too, but just for time's sake, I'm just gonna do the top so I can show you how I did that. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna base coat my wood round. So again, this is a plaid surface. Um, like I said, there's so, so, so many things you can do. You can purchase this on plaidonline.com. Um, but you can wood burn on this, you could paint on this, you can mod podge on this. Um, there's just, it, there really is just like an endless amount of ideas that you can do um, on this particular surface. It's really fun and it's really um, versatile. So I'm gonna grab some of my white paint. This is just folk art matte in titanium white. And um, I do wanna talk about the formulas of paint as well. The reason I used multi-surface on the coasters is because multi-surface is um, dishwasher safe. So when I go and I put glasses on this, if there's condensation and things like that, the multi-surface will um, protect the surface of my project. Whereas this one is just gonna be a sign. So I can just use our regular matte acrylic paint. I don't have to worry about protecting it from um, extra things like water and condensation and things like that. So now I'm just gonna do, um, I'll show you here. I'm just gonna do a circle inside of my um, wood round here. I'm, I'm not gonna go right to the edge. I'm gonna leave some raw wood because I like the way that looks. But I'm gonna do white because when I go to cut out my printable, it'll hide the white of the paper. So I don't have to worry about getting right, you know, cutting each individual letter out. That would take forever. It'll kind of um, disappear into the white of the paint. So when I have a white background, I like to base coat in white. If I had an orange background, I would, you know, match it to a folk art paint in orange and I would paint it um, that color instead. But since it's white, I'm going to base coat it in white today. Uh, Jesse Jill said sweet potato and green bean casserole. Um, so yeah. She's in agreement with us. Cynthia said turkey. Uh, okay. Jill also said uh, no cranberry ever. <laughs> so she's in my camp for that. Not a cranberry lover, fine. And Cynthia also said that uh, she does wood burning on those surfaces. Oh, great. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, these are really fun to wood burn. You get that, like, pretty, you know, rustic sort of look because you've got the bark edges as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are, these are so, so fun to wood burn on. We have a pl our plaid wood burning tool, which is really great. Um, you can also purchase that on platonline.com. It comes with tons of tips, so you can do so many different kinds of projects. You can do lettering, you can do, um, <coughs> excuse me, image transferring, you can do stamping. There's so, so, so many things that come in that set. So make sure to check that out too if you're interested. So I'm just using the edge of my brush. I'm going, I'm probably about an inch from the edge here. I wanna make sure my circle is big enough to encompass my design later. We can always make it bigger if we need to. But I do want to leave some of that raw wood because I think it's so pretty and it's really pretty, especially for this time of year. Yeah, and that was a great tip about the uh, multi-surface versus matte paints yeah. and why you would use them. Sometimes I just, you know, it's second nature to me here at Platt, all the different formulas we use and why, um, but hopefully you guys will learn a little something today. We'll get into the Mod Podge formulas as well once we start using them. Um, I can explain a little further why we have a couple different formulas up here today. Okay, so make sure I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I think that should be big enough for my little fall phrase. So I'm going to um, clean my brush off and then we can start cutting out our designs while these continue to dry. And then if they're still wet when we're ready to Mod Podge, I'm going to grab my multi-purpose um, heat tool and we can dry it a little further. 
All right, so I'm gonna grab my pumpkins. Start cutting those out. Now we need a couple. I'm just gonna show you one of the coasters. Um, I'm gonna start with just one, kind of give you an idea of how I did the rest. So I'm gonna go right up to the edge. I like that black outline, so I'm gonna try my best to save that black outline because I think it's really fun. If you were gonna paint your coasters white, you wouldn't even have to worry about getting right up to the edge. You could just include all the white on there and just like our fall phrase, um, the background would disappear into the paint color. So, but since I wanted to do this fun, like pastel-y purple color, I do um, wanna make sure I get right up to the edge and have a nice clean edge. And a tip for when you're cutting, um, you know, smaller things or detailed things, I kind of keep my scissors still and I use my left hand since I'm right-handed um, and I move the paper in the scissors as opposed to trying to move my scissors around. You often get a cleaner um, cut that way when you're kind of doing tiny detail things. You see how I'm tilting the paper as opposed to the scissors? Um, so that's just a little tip. Of course, you would do it, you know, opposite if you're left-handed. You'll tilt the paper in your right hand and cut with your left. So, but it makes it really quick and you get a nice crisp edge that way. It's like driving a car. You just kind of like steer it with your left hand. Mm -hmm. Right in the blade. Yeah, Cynthia says that uh, she uses the um wood burning tool that we make here at Plaid. Oh, great. It's really good. It's it's really inexpensive as far as wood burning tools go, so it's a really awesome value, um, especially if you're just getting started and you kind of just want to give it a try. Um, but yeah, it comes with so many different tips. We have a couple different versions. We have the deluxe version that comes with so many, um, it comes with even more tips, but it also has a temperature control. So you can use higher or lower heat depending on whether you're burning wood um, or leather or cork. You can do it on multiple surfaces. Um, but yeah, there's lots of versions and there's lots of different tips and about a million projects you can make with that tool. Okay, so those are my pumpkins. I, like I said, I only need two because I'm gonna just do one coaster for you guys. But then I also wanna cut out my little harvest wishes phrase. I think it's so cute. And you'll see when we go to make the project why we base coated it white because I don't have to worry about cutting it out perfectly. I don't have to worry about cutting out all the tiny little letters. Um, it'll just disappear right onto our painted surface, which is really fun, really easy, um, and really quick to do. So they're still a little tacky, so I'm gonna grab my multi-purpose heat tool. So I love to use this for drawing acrylic paint. It's also really great for popping bubbles and resin or paint pours. Um, you can use it to move paint around in paint pours. There's so many ways to use this tool. So I'm gonna use that to um, dry my paint today. Almost dry. Okay, so that's nice and dry now. So um, we can start Mod Podging. Um, so like I said, I want to talk a little bit about why we're using the two different formulas. For the coasters here today, I'm gonna to be using our Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe formula. So again, just like the name says, um, this formula does make your project dishwasher safe. And while we're not gonna be putting our wood coaster in the dishwasher, um, it will protect our coaster from the cool cups and condensation that will um, be affecting your project. So um, any project you make using dishwasher safe makes it, um, if it's glass or ceramic or something that's non-porous, makes it top rack dishwasher safe when cured. 
Um, so again, it's really great for doing things like this with coasters um, because it protects it from all of that moisture. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open it up and we'll use it just like um, any other Mod Podge formula. So I'm gonna lay out kind of where I want my pumpkins to be. I'm gonna have them kind of like peeking on. I think it's really cute to kind of make almost like a repeating pattern. So when I do something like this, um, when I wanna kind of remember where I'm gonna place it, I'll use the, uh, my finger to kind of fold that edge and then I can trim it in advance um, and I, I'll know where to put the Mod Podge before I place it down. So now I have that little guide that shows me exactly where I need to cut and where I need to add my Mod Podge. Same thing for over here, so I'll press it down and now I know exactly where to trim. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut on that folded line. And um, if you didn't do that, you know, you could trim it after you Mod Podge it on, but you wouldn't know where to, like I said, put the Mod Podge, you'd end up with a lot of extra glue everywhere that you didn't need. Um, and it would be a little bit messier than it really needs to be. So that's a little tip for if you're um, gonna be having a design that kind of goes off the edge, you can go ahead and trim it in advance. Oops, I need that. So now I can grab my plate here. Um, I use my plate to apply the Mod Podge so I don't get it on my table. Grab my flat brush, dip it in my Mod Podge, apply a nice even coat to the back. You don't need a ton of Mod Podge, but you do wanna make sure you have enough to coat the entire surface of the paper. And then you can place it down onto your coaster. I'm gonna line it up on the edge where I wanted it. Jesse, can you slide your hands oh, yeah, forward sorry. a little bit? I always get right up on my project and Steven has to remind me. <laughs> okay, so now you can see how easy it went down, nice and smooth, that Mod Podge. There's no bubbles, um, no wrinkles, really easy to do. And that's because we applied it to our paper and then added it to our surface as opposed to applying it to our surface and then putting the paper on. Sometimes you can get bubbles that way. So now our second little pumpkin Again, a nice, even, smooth coat. Doesn't take a ton. And I'm going to apply it. I'm gonna to try to remember where I had it. That looks about right. Thank you. And I'm just gonna press it down with my fingers, make sure all the edges are flush. And again, no bubbles, because I did it with my, onto the paper first. So super simple to do. And then to make sure that we keep it safe from moisture, like we talked about, you do want to make sure you have a nice, generous coat on top. So you can wait till it dries um, before you do the top coat, or you can just do it right away, depending on you know how much Mod Podge you've used. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it right away just so I can show you guys. You want a nice, generous coat on top of the Mod Podge. And that is what's going to protect it from the moisture. So you can do one or two coats, kind of depends. Um, the dishwasher safe formula I'm using is gloss. So also something to keep in mind, your coaster will be glossy, but I think that's pretty. So I'm not worried about that. And now you have a super cute, super easy fall coaster. It's great for um, a hostess gift. If, you, if someone else is entertaining, you're going to a party or going somewhere else for Thanksgiving, um, it'd be super fun to give this to someone. Um, but yeah, really easy to do and really quick. Yeah, super quick. Yeah. Speaking of super, I'm excited to talk about oh. Mod Podge Super Matte. <laughs> you mentioned this is one of your favorites, and I think Good it's also segue. one of my favorites, too. Yes, it is one of my favorites. Um, okay, so like Steven said, now it's time to do our Mod Podge Super Matte. Um, so the reason I love this is because I just really love a matte finish. Um, and while our normal matte formula is matte, <laughs> I'm going to say it about a thousand times, the word matte, um, this one just, it looks like it's not even there. So when you Mod Podge it onto paper, um, it looks like the original printed paper. It is just like, it, it's invisible. Um, it also works really well with chalk paint. So if you guys are used to that chalk paint and you love that really chalky matte um, finish, this is a great formula to use with that because it doesn't take away from any of the chalky um, finish. So really good to use in conjunction with chalk paint, but it also works really well with our matte acrylic paints. So. Um, I'll show you what I mean. We'll hopefully get it to dry a little bit. You can see how matte it really is. But I love that you can't, there's no brush strokes. You can't see any of the sheen when you're done. It really is like super crazy matte. So I'm gonna apply this to the back of my little fall phrase. Again, just like you would use any Mod Podge formula. 
And when you apply it, can you put the lid back on and show the bottle a little bit yeah, closer? Yeah, of course. Let me go ahead and place this really quick so it doesn't dry out on me. Sure. So I'm going to do it at the top and then, oh, I forgot to cut my little pumpkin. I got to cut that too for my little, so I, I want to make sure that it stays on my little white um, circle that we've made because that's what's going to allow it to really just disappear. See how you can't even see the edges? Make sure it's nice and flush, um, but I will show y'all. This is a brand new formula this year. This is our Mod Podge Super Matte. So it's got this like pale gray. You know, you can kind of tell all the different formulas by the colors. So this one has that pale gray color. And that is the Super Matte. Brand new, one of my favorites for sure. I just put my fingers in that, okay. <laughs> so now really quick, I'm gonna cut out my pumpkin because I forgot. Oh, I was like, I lost my scissors. Kind of just round out and balance our little sign here. Like you said earlier, you can leave some white around this mm -hmm. since you're going to be placing it on white paint. Yep. If I was putting this on a different color, just like Steven said, I'd want to be really careful and get into all those little details and make sure I cut it out perfectly, but I, I can be kind of messy. You can see I was kind of choppy with it, and it won't matter because I'm Mod Podging it onto white, and so it'll be, it'll just disappear. Oop, what am I doing? It'll disappear right into the project because you have the same color background um, on our project as we do our paper. Again, just a thin coat. Put it right under my design there. Really cute. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure my brush goes in water so it doesn't get cured and sealed with Mod Podge. Um, but a super cute little fall sign. And then on this one here, I just took some more folk art paint. I kind of matched it. There's about a, I don't even know how many, but there's about a million folk art colors. Not really, but there's hundreds. Um, so it was really easy to do to match um, a couple paint colors to my little design here from the printables. Um, but I just painted a little uh, leaf design around the edges to kind of fill it in. And you have a super cute, super quick and easy um, fall sign. So is there any questions about any of the products even? Um, we have someone that says they might ask some questions in a little bit because they joined the live, so we'll give them some time. Okay. Uh, but do you want to talk about the two formulas we used again? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so the two formulas I showed you guys here today are the Mod Podge Dishwasher, sh dishwasher Safe. It's a mouthful. Um, and that is what I use on these coasters here. And the reason I use the Dishwasher Safe is because um, when you use this on your on most things like a glass or a mug or something like that, it is top rack dishwasher safe once it's cured. So on a coaster, it also protects your coaster from um, condensation when you go to put your cup on it. You know, it won't ruin your design because of course paper, you don't want to get it wet. But when it's sealed correctly with the dishwasher safe, um, it will be protected from that condensation. So that's why I chose to use the dishwasher safe formula to do my fall coasters here today. So you can see it's got a glossy finish. You can put one or two coats on it depending on how glossy you want it to be and how, how well you want to protect it. Um, but a really quick and easy fall project to do. Um, and again, these are using our free Mod Podge printables from our Mod Podge printable library on plaidonline.com. And then we also made this cute little um, fall harvest wishes sign. So this is, um, I used our brand new super mat. We can do a top coat on this too. I should have done that so you can see the finish. Um, and this is our maddest Mod Podge formula. So. If you guys haven't used this yet, it works great with chalk paint. Um, it really absolutely has zero finish to it. Like I said earlier, our matte formula, our original Mod Podge matte, uh, while it is very matte and it's, you know, the maddest, of, it's matter than satin and gloss, mm -hmm. it still has a tiny bit of a sheen to it where this one looks like you have no finish on it at all. It looks like you didn't even seal it. So I'm actually gonna seal this for you guys so you can hopefully see. I'm gonna grab my flat brush. I'm going to put a coat over our project here. You can put it right over the wood. You won't see it over the wood either because it really just like, like I said, there's no brush strokes on this formula at all. It just disappears. It looks like velvety smooth, like you haven't even put any Mod Podge on it. I'm just 
going to coat the whole surface. It'll be really well protected. So when you go and you throw this in a box, um, you know, to put out next year for your fall decor, when the season's over, it'll be well protected in there. You won't have to worry about, you know, it getting damaged in storage or anything like that. Go right up to the edge. And again, just like any of our Mod Podges, it goes on milky and then it dries super clear. So when it dries, you won't see that sort of haziness that you see now. Let me see if I can dry it with the heat pen. I wouldn't recommend forcing to dry, um, by the way, when you're doing your actual craft. I would definitely let it air dry, but I, I wanna see if you, I can show you guys the finish. So let's see if we can dry it a little bit. Okay, so I, I really focused um, the multi-purpose heat tool on the right side. So you can see here, like, do you see how there's absolutely no sheen? Like yeah. the wood just looks like raw wood still. There's no shine to it. There's no brush strokes. It doesn't even look like it's been sealed. Yeah, some, I'm glad you did that because somebody asked, um, do you always need to air dry Mod Podge? You know, you don't always need to, but the problem is if you've put a lot of Mod Podge on it and you try to dry it with like a hair dryer or something, sometimes you'll dry the top layer and the underneath will stay wet, if that makes sense. If it's mm -hmm. like a very thick layer and you have, you know, lots of uh, like thick areas of Mod Podge. Um, so that's why I like to let it air dry. I like to let it dry naturally, just the way it would, because it prevents that from happening. You don't end up with any white halos that just take much longer than they need to to dry. Uh, but it dries really quick. So within an hour, it's dry to the touch. Um, it takes longer to cure. So make sure if you're doing something like the dishwasher safe or outdoor or fabric where you need to cure it before you are washing it or putting it in the elements, make sure to check the bottle for the cure time. But when you're just making things for, um, you know, for decorative purposes like this, it'll dry to the touch really quickly quickly so um, I recommend just letting it air dry cool well I think that's all the questions we have um, okay. don't forget about the Mod Podge printable library yep uh, like we mentioned you can find it in the description of this video you can also just google Mod Podge printable library and it'll take you straight to Plaid's website where you can download all the fall and other seasonal patterns yeah. and yeah Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Um, like Stephen said, make sure to check out that printable library. Um, happy fall, everyone. I know it's been fall for a while, but now it's not Halloween fall anymore. We've moved into Thanksgiving fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out our Mod Podge printable library, and we'll see you next time. Bye.